Jesus says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video, and today we will be talking about the recently released Oppenheimer from the very same director of Interstellar, The Prestige, and Tenet. Movies that I definitely need to watch, but the director I'm speaking of is the Christopher Nolan, who is well known for his stunning cinematography, and you can see why in his most recent movie, Oppenheimer, which is based off the life of J. Robert Oppenheimer and his involvement in the creation of the first atomic bomb. But with that all said and done, let's jump into this. So Oppenheimer is a history movie which is based off the real life story of Oppenheimer and his involvement in the creation of the first atomic bomb. And as I am a big history enjoyer, this was right up my alley. Even though at first I was very scared of having to sit for a three hour long movie. But nonetheless, the movie was absolutely fantastic, having a great mix of both fiction and non-fiction. Additionally, the movie did an incredible job of portraying the emotions that Oppenheimer would have been feeling throughout all of this. However, before I continue, I'm going to be heading into spoiler territory, so if you don't want spoilers, please skip to the time shown on screen. Now then, the first scene that really stood out to me was the scene where Oppenheimer has to give a speech after the atomic bombs are used. The scene felt somewhat suffocating as we get close-up shots of different people in the crowd, and the audio did a brilliant job at making the scene feel chaotic and horrific, as the people in the crowd continue to slam their feet on the wooden floor, and Christopher Nolan did a great job at showing us the current mental state of Oppenheimer by showing his hallucinations. For example, the lights getting much brighter than they actually were, resembling the atomic bomb when they tested it, and as Oppenheimer walks away, he steps on a body, thus representing his guilt for what happened. One of my favourite things about this scene is that it subverted my expectations, as I entirely thought there would be a sudden cut to Oppenheimer surrounded by flames and corpses. But Christopher Nolan doesn't do this. For one, he doesn't need to, as most people who are going to see the movie most likely already have some knowledge on Oppenheimer and the history surrounding him. But also, I think if he did make the scene that way, it would have been a bit distasteful as, at the end of the day, not all of this is fiction. However, the next thing I want to talk about is a moment in the movie where they discover that using the atomic bomb could start a chain reaction that would destroy the world. This bit of info is brought up multiple times throughout the movie, but right at the end it becomes a metaphor that was so impressive my jaw dropped straight through the floor. What I mean by this is that though they didn't destroy the world with just one atomic bomb, they may have destroyed it anyways with the creation of it. And I'll be honest, I could continue talking about this moment for forever, but I think I'm just going to leave it there and begin talking about the cinematography, which in retrospect I did kind of already talk a little bit about when discussing the speech scene. But nonetheless, let's talk cinematography. Firstly, the lighting in the movie becomes extremely bright during what I would describe as stressful scenes for Oppenheimer, for example the speech scene I talked about prior, which I think works fantastic to show Oppenheimer's mental state of guilt and pride mixed into one, and works as a constant reminder to his work on the atomic bomb and what it caused. However, there was one moment that I wasn't fond of. The moment I'm referring to is the moment where Oppenheimer sits at a table, butt naked, in front of other people while he is ridden by the woman he cheated on his wife with. And now a friend of mine, Greenbox, told me this is supposed to represent that Oppenheimer feels naked. Damn right I did! But to me, it just seemed kind of funny, because I'm a silly little guy. Also, I was impressed that Christopher Nolan was able to simulate a real atomic bomb without the use of CGI and no actual atomic bomb, though surprisingly a lot of people thought he would use one. I just thought it was worth mentioning, as it goes to show how good of a director Christopher Nolan is. But with all that said and done, let's talk a little bit about the actors. The movie is filled to the brim with great actors, and I just want to praise some of them for their excellent jobs. Firstly is Killian Murphy, who did an amazing job at playing the role of Oppenheimer, and managed to portray all of his emotions excellently. And not to mention, he had a great dedication to his role, eating very little during filming so he could get the appearance of Oppenheimer just right. But the actual J. Robert Oppenheimer had a very distinct physicality and silhouette, says Killian Murphy in an interview with the New York Times. Also, his dedication to this was extremely impressive, as his co-star Emily Blunt stated that he only ate one almond a day so that he could really bring the character of Oppenheimer to life for everyone watching the movie. So I think he was the perfect choice for the role of Oppenheimer. But next I would like to talk about Rami Malek, who played David L. Hill, and Robert Downey Jr., who played Louis Strauss. The two really shined together when they were both on screen, especially Rami Malek, who had what I could only describe as a based moment, but I won't dive into that. Instead, I just recommend watching the movie for yourself, as I wouldn't be able to quite do it justice with my own words. 
Well, the next up is Emily Blunt, who played the role of Katie Oppenheimer, wife of J. Robert Oppenheimer. She played her role perfectly and managed to make some of the scenes she was in genuinely depressing. I would also like to talk about Florence Pugh, who played the role of Jean Tatlock, the woman that Oppenheimer had an affair with. Every scene she was in had a mix of both tension and joy, but last up is Devin Bostick, who played the role of Seth Nedermeyer. And I'll be honest, he wasn't in the movie much, only having about one or two lines, but I had to mention him because he's the love of my life. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. And the actor of Roderick in Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and for that he deserved a mention. However, that's all I have to say about the actors in the movie, but there were plenty of others that did a fantastic job, I just didn't mention them in this video. So here are some honourable mentions. Matt Damon as Leslie Groves, Jason Clarke as Roger Robb, Benny Safdie as Edward Teller, sorry if I butchered your name, and Tom Conti as Albert Einstein. In conclusion, the movie was pretty much perfect. There were points where I did get a little bit bored, but I don't blame the movie for that. Instead, I blame my attention span, which is about the same as a two-year-old who hasn't gained sentience yet. But back to the point, the movie was wonderful, and you can tell everyone who worked on it obviously brought their A game. Whether it be Christopher Nolan's incredible cinematography, or the dedicated actors like Cillian Murphy, who is literally subsisting on almonds every day to keep the appearance of Oppenheimer. And you can tell it's not just me that thinks this, as one simple look through Letterbox and you will see hundreds of 5 star reviews, or you can look to IMDB where you will see it received an incredible 8.8 .8 stars, and on Rotten Tomatoes it had a critic score of 94% and audience score of 92%. So overall I think this movie is, as I said before, pretty much perfect, but before I finish this video I quickly want to say a special thank you to Greenbox, Mason, Oliver, Reese, and Johan. All five of them were a great help, and if you would like to see my friend Greenbox's channel, please click on his link in the description. And of course, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to subscribe, smash that like button, and leave a comment down below. And that is all. Goodbye until next time.